Wife cheated on me with her colleagues, so I took everything she had. In life, we should always be prepared for the best and the worst. It's unpredictable and shocking how one moment can put your life together or make your life fall apart, as it did in mine. I, 36M, married my best friend's sister 10 years ago, and in addition to that, we dated each other for 4 years, but I have known her since we were like 5. You can call us childhood sweethearts. Our dating days were very sweet and bitter because our relationship almost broke my friendship with Jacob, her brother. I'll call her Candace, 33F, she was not just my girlfriend but my childhood crush and the only woman I ever laid eyes on. On top of that, I considered her my soulmate until she willingly decided to break that soul contract of ours which ruined my life and our daughters as well. Our marriage life was going smoothly, and we never fell out of love. She always took care of my needs, and I did the same with her. She is a great mother, and we have a six-year-old daughter together. She is always very nice to everyone and has a very sympathetic nature, which made me rethink my thoughts before doubting her for something obscene like this. I am a lawyer and always occupied with different cases, which pushes me to spend more time with my case files in my chamber and less time with my wife, but I always make sure to be there for her, to make everything special, and to make her feel the same way as she did back 10 years ago on the day. I proposed to her if she wanted to marry me and she immediately said yes. Candace works as an assistant manager in my brother's company, and she is always present and attentive in her work, but that has never stopped her from being a good wife or mother. Since the day she got promoted to an assistant manager position in a different branch, things have been very rough, with regular arguments. She had been coming home later than usual, and I thought it was because she was adjusting to a different branch with different people, but my doubt and fear escalated the day. She came home very drunk, dropped off by her friend because she was unable to walk. I already tucked our daughter in the bed and took Candace to our room. I was changing her clothes when something caught my eye. I saw two huge hickeys on her back and one on her shoulder. Something inside my stomach turned up and down, and I felt the anxiety creep in and lots of other thoughts of how and why. I kept my composure, relaxed my mind, and let myself not overthink and doubt her. I headed towards the living room and started preparing myself for tomorrow's case, but my mind was still revolving around those hickeys and how she got them. After all that thinking, I decided to confront her the next day before she left for work. Her cold and irritated behavior was already bothering me, and all these little details were the cherry on top. I never knew our marriage would turn bitter after 10 years of sweetness, and maybe it was just a phase. I went inside our bedroom, and her phone was continuously buzzing every second. My mind was questioning who could be texting her, so I went to the desk and tried checking her phone. In our 10 years of marriage, Candace never had a lock on her phone, and this time her phone was locked. My thoughts again started haunting me, and I was thinking about our lives, our daughter, and everything we shared. I put the phone back on the desk and went outside to get ready for today's case. I went inside the kitchen and started preparing breakfast for Candace and our daughter. I placed the dishes on the table and suddenly felt someone hugging me from behind. I turned around and saw Candace smiling and hugging me tightly. I hugged her back and felt relaxed, but there was another thing that caught my mind. She always wore rose and vanilla mixed perfume, and today she smelled like men's perfume, and her hair reeked of smoke as if she were smoking. All these little details made me not hug her back. She sat in front of me at the dining table, all smiley faces, and she was in a very cheerful mood, but I was not happy. So, I asked her the reason behind her happiness. She told me she was happy because I made her breakfast. I couldn't stop myself from asking where she was last night, so I eventually did. The smile on her face faded. She apologized and told me that she forgot to inform me about the welcome party in her new office, where she was forcing herself not to drink but eventually ended up drinking a lot. She looked frightened and suspicious. I asked her where she got all those hickeys on her back and when she started putting locks on her phone. She stood up, put her hand on her head, and started grabbing her hair like a maniac. I ran towards her and tried to stop her. She was screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. I got scared by her behavior. She said I was not seeing her efforts she had been putting in her work and doubting her for fking someone. She called me insensitive that I didn't care to ask about the marks and just made my assumption that it was a hickey. She said it was a cigarette burn she got in the club. I guess anyone at my place would have done the same thing. Before I could say it, she stopped me by telling me that her phone password was my birth date and because of office files in her phone she had to put a lock. After all the screaming and shouting, I went to work. During my work, I couldn't stop thinking of different possibilities, and I wanted to talk to my brother James about it, but our marriage privacy was another thing that would make Candace more upset, so I just tried to forget it. I don't know I found Candace's behavior very suspicious. I went back home, and our little daughter Lily was playing with her toys. In the bedroom, I heard Candace giggling and talking to someone. She was not laughing in a fun way but more in a flirty way. I headed towards the room and overheard her saying, How red is it? What was she talking about? Giggling. As soon as I opened the door, she immediately hung up the call and gave a fake laugh. She got scared. I asked her to whom she was talking while pretending to be searching for something. She shrugged off by saying it was just a friend and left the room. Nope, 
It wasn't just a friend, there was indeed something going on with the way she was acting and gaslighting me into thinking differently. That evening, she was wearing a backless top, and her hickey was visible to me. It was very dark and red, and it was not a burn. I know I love her, but I can't act like a fool in love and let her pull she tea under my nose. I can't stop myself from suspecting her. Update 1 It's been 3 weeks since my last update. It was pretty hard for me to do anything after seeing those hickeys or whatever she called it. Let me tell you guys my instinct was right and I was not overthinking. Candace continued with her shady activities so one day I decided to stay up and check her phone after she went to sleep. That evening I was doing my work in the living room, and she was on her phone for two straight hours, looking worried while texting someone. I didn't ask because she was only going to lie straight to my face. After an hour, she was inside our bedroom, sleeping peacefully. And let me tell you guys, we haven't had sex for a month now. Even on days I tried initiating it, she told me she was tired, but I never let it be the reason for the argument. As I was about to reach for the phone, it started buzzing, and it was an unknown number. Calling her, I took the phone out outside the room and answered the call. There was a woman on the other end screaming something, which almost made me throw up. The woman was screaming and saying that she finally found her number, and if she did not stop F-king her husband, she would tell everyone in the office and make her jobless. As soon as she finished her sentence, I told her I was her husband and there might be some misunderstanding. The woman, whose name is Jenny, was the wife of Matthew, who works in the same office as Candace. She gave me her address and asked me to meet her, as there was something she wanted me to know. Let me tell you guys that the worst thing to experience in life is getting stabbed by the person who took an oath to be there for you for the rest of your life. All this while, I was praying and wishing that all my assumptions turn out to be false. I loved her and I didn't want to think that on days she refused to sleep with me, it was because she was sleeping with her colleague. The next day I went to meet Jenny. She was pregnant and younger than me and Candace, which made me feel bad for her. She was eight months pregnant. She told me that her husband was cheating on her with Candace. Her eyes were teary, and for some reason, I couldn't cry and felt the only emotion, which was anger. It felt sad and a very cruel thing to do to your pregnant wife, and my wife was a part of it. She opened the tab, and it had obscene images of Matthew and Candace not just pictures but a video of them having sex. Jenny had got those videos from Matthew's phone last evening and they had a confrontation. That was the reason Jenny was worried and texting someone last evening. I felt the taste of bile in my mouth and cried my heart out. I asked her to send me all those pictures and promised her that Candace would suffer for wrecking her house. She told me that she was going to file for divorce, but I intentionally asked her to wait a few days so she could enjoy the disaster as well. After leaving Jenny's house, I drove off to my brother's place. He has two kids and has always been a great advisor in my life. I drank a lot while sitting next to him until I passed out. After two hours, I woke up with a throbbing pain in my head, and my brother was sitting on the sofa, rubbing my feet. After having a warm cup of espresso, he started asking me different questions, and I understood none. I gave him my phone and asked him to open the gallery and see what's inside. He looked disgusted and immediately put the phone on the table. I told him about everything, and there he interrupted me and gave me more information that she had been cheating before the promotion, in her previous team. Matthew was her team leader, and there could be a way she did that for promotion. One thing about Candace that I forgot to mention is her greed. She was never a gold digger and earned her own money and always bought her stuff, but she was greedy for fame and position, and I was not surprised if that was the case. James was the owner of the company, but he always worked from home because his wife Rose was half paralyzed, and that's another story. Anyway, he's a great brother and husband. I asked him why didn't he tell me all this. He said he was investigating into the matter and didn't want to take any action basis the rumors. He didn't have any evidence to prove his point so remained shut. I drove off home and had already practiced acting normal like nothing had happened before. As I went in, Lily came running towards me, and I held her in my arms, giggling. Candace walked towards me kissed my lips and told me happily that she made my favorite lasagna. I felt like throwing up. After the dinner, well, it was hard to eat with her, and I wanted to put an end to this as soon as possible. She is evil, a narcissist, and one hell of a gaslighter. I was going inside my office, but Candace hugged me from behind. I turned my face towards her. She was wearing her red satin slip dress. She used to look beautiful, but today she looked so disgusting to me that it was hard for me to look at her. She asked me whether I picked up that call last night, to which I immediately said no. She again asked me and told me I could tell the truth and she wouldn't be mad, but I was not a fool, and I disagreed again and kissed her lips. I was following her path of lying and gaslighting the situation. She pushed me onto the bed and whispered in my ear that Lily had slept. I asked her if she was feeling tired as usual. She looked at me in disbelief and refused. I tried resisting, but I gave in. I did it also to humiliate her later. It's going to hit her hard after she will know that I already knew about the SHTS she pulled and how f***ing disgusting she is. It was the most thrilling sex we ever had, and I wasn't guilty about how it was going to make her feel. She was using me for emotions, so this time I used her. After she fell asleep, I took out my arm from under her head, left the room and headed towards my office. I had three missed calls from James. I called him back, and, he asked me to meet him tomorrow, 
as it was something he couldn't tell me on the phone. I went inside Lily's room and looked at her. I felt so bad. And it made me so angry at Candace that I felt like killing Candace. How could she steal her own daughter's childhood and our happiness? I'm just not able to sleep thinking about what is stored for me next. I will make another update after I get done with everything. Update 2 It took a while for me to update you guys, as I was busy making my wife jobless. And the divorce status, so instead of updating regularly, I thought of doing it after sorting out everything. So, in the morning, I drove off to James, and he was in the company's office. James showed me something on the computer. There were pictures of Candace with different men and one of them was from our school, Richard, who was her team leader. As I said, James was investigating the matter and he found that Candace was hooking up not only with Matthew but others too. The employees had confessed to James that Candace was a very easy woman, and she used to go to the club with them. She had sex with Richard because he promised to promote her to assistant manager, which he did, and she did the same with Matthew. James recorded the conversation for the jury of the company, as the company here has strict no dating rules and many employees are going to get jobless, along with Candace. Candace was beautiful. She was always attractive and knew how to take advantage of that. James sent an email to the different branch where Matthew and Candace were working or F-King. Half of the time I didn't know what to do and just sat there hopelessly. As soon as the branch received the email, Candace started calling me. I picked up the call and she asked me to come home immediately. I told James and headed towards home. I went inside and saw Candace crying. She hugged me and started crying. I didn't hug her back. She looked at me and said she lost her job because of something. I asked her the reason and started making up some stories. I pushed her back and asked her to stop lying or if she wanted me to play her video of F-King her colleagues on the TV. She looked at me in disbelief, and I told her that I got to know about everything from Jenny. She looked at me for a moment and started gaslighting me again, saying that I was never there and always busy with work, so she couldn't resist. Lily came inside, and Candace was going to take her, but that's when I stopped her from showing fake concerns about us. I told her that I had already filed for divorce and that was the reason she had been fired from her job. I will have custody of our daughter and take care of her needs. I am a lawyer so it was easier for me to get things done. She started sobbing and crying and begging me if she could do anything to fix this. It made me so angry, and I asked her how she could fix anything when she felt no remorse for what happened. I asked James to take Lily to his place so she wouldn't have to witness such things. I felt sorry for my little girl. When she was born, I was happy about her future, and she was blessed with two parents. Being raised by a single parent, I never wanted my daughter to go through the same in her life I asked Candace if she wanted to tell her brother, Jacob, my best friend, about this and she got so scared. I gave her the divorce paper and asked her to sign it and put an end to this. As she was going to sign, a pleasant surprise came to her. My mother, her parents, and her brother came, and it was his idea to humiliate her for what she did. The house was named after my daughter, so Candace had nothing except her own money or savings. Her parents loved me, and they were disappointed and disgusted by her actions. Jacob told her that the reason he was against us marrying was because he knew she could ruin me and the family, and she proved him right. After all, her brother knew her well, my mother loved her as her daughter, and there she also wiped her tears and consoled her. I read the divorce papers and told Candace that she could come and visit and was also allowed to stay with Lily in this house, and I would never take Lily from her. Before this, I had already shown her pictures to Jacob, but not the obscene ones, and to be honest, I have no respect for her. I would have forgiven her if it were a one-time thing but doing something wrong is one thing, and being proud and continuing it again is another thing, and she chose to destroy it all alone. There were times when I was indeed busy and didn't take her out or spend time with her, but I did my best and I learned from it. When I tried giving her time, I guess I was late. I never saw her narcissistic side because I was blind, but I cannot forget those two hickeys. Anyhow, whatever happened can't be undone, and I do miss the old her. My mother asked me if I wanted to stay with her for a while, and I told her that I wouldn't and I would be living here, but from now on she will stay with me? Candace's parents scolded her and said many cruel words to her, they were very respectful writers and doctors and she put dirt on their names and fame. Jenny, on the other hand, also got divorced and went to a different city to live with her parents. After the divorce things were pretty difficult to handle but the satisfaction of making her jobless remained constant in my heart after seeing the aftermath of things happened. It was hard for Lily but then she loved spending time with her grandmother, playing and coloring and sometimes she was all sad because obviously, the kiddo misses her mother, and as for Candace she got her new profound freedom to go and meet different guys regularly. She visits Lily on daily basis and we never saw each other because whenever she came I was already in my office and from the window I saw Matthew dropping her off for a week and after that bit was someone else. It was not just friends, she gave them proper kisses after coming out of the car. Was she always like that? I was too blind to see, and honestly, guys, I dodged a bullet, but after 14 years of togetherness, I am still shocked, and if it were not for the lack of communication, I would have never known. It's been a month now, and I am busy with my cases and all. We did see each other after all and greet, and I feel empty and sad and on depression and anxiety medication. She is doing better than ever, 
with no remorse or anything. But from time to time she gets humiliated, which satisfies me a lot. But in the end, I would like to say that she was a lesson for me to learn, and I was just there to let people see the real Candace behind the mask. Her parents hate her, and she is not getting jobs and just humiliations from mutual friends, but she is still very proud and continuously doing what she does. But apart from the rest, I only want the best for my daughter, a happy childhood and a great future filled with love.